Hey, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us. Nick Lee, Guam EPA in the uh, KUAM News uh, Zoom room. Nick, uh, so glad you could be here. Hey, Chris. Hey, Sabrina. Thanks for having me. Right on. And there's, I know there's a bunch of stuff to catch up on, but I wanted to kind of start uh, maybe a little lighthearted note, uh, but there was an NOV that you had, you had come on the show and talked about, and this was relative to a... Um, I believe it was a uh, pesticide uh, technician who had uh, allegedly poisoned a bunch of birds because he was angry at somebody. Um, is there any uh, follow-up information on that incident, Nick? That's correct, Chris. So as previously reported on the link, uh, an NOV was issued to a pesticides technician uh, employed with Nokoi. Uh, part of that NOV uh, uh, had a $2,000 administrative penalty order attached to it, along with the uh, compliance orders. Uh, a few, about two weeks ago, uh, the company did make a payment uh, in the full amount of $2,000. Uh, so the agency is working with NOCOI to close that notice of violation out. Uh, there's still some compliance orders that need to be met uh, based on uh, the instructions on the, the notice of violation. Uh, Nokohoi has uh, 30 days to submit certain information uh, to Guam EPA. Uh, information includes things like um, the, the types of uh, restricted use pesticides they've ordered, they've had in stock, or they've they've applied. Uh, you know, they, the agency wants to see pictures uh, of the facility. Uh, they they need to ensure that their certifications are up to date uh, because there are different certifications for applicators uh, and people that. Are going to be handling restricted use pesticides. So the time frame uh, for all of this uh, information uh, is between July 1st of 2019 and July 31st of 2021. Uh, so uh, it's an expansive uh, time frame. Uh, uh, the pesticides enforcement program wants to, uh, you know, they want to ensure that uh, you know all, all the documentation is is in order. Uh, remember, you're dealing with products that in, are intended to kill something, right? So uh, there's, you know, again, we, we always talk about this, there's a legal, uh, scientific, and administrative review that goes into uh, these products. Um, it, it's regulated by both uh, federal uh, and local statutes. And so we want to ensure that uh, applicators are using this the way the manufacturers intended it to, that way uh, it's effective. Uh, the, the, the worker is not uh, injuring themselves, and, and they don't cause any uh, undue harm to the environment as they're uh, applying these things. Nick, uh, you know, so when I was reading um, the NOV, it was, it, it, and we were able to find out this kind of stemmed around like almost an Atom Baba, right? Was the uh, the individual who allegedly uh committed uh these infractions um was upset because someone had given him a funny look were you able to glean any more information kind of in the in the post uh, investigation phase of this no uh, we only look at what our what our regulations uh allow us to i, I mean it, I, obviously you're going to get some information that uh it, it's it's expansive uh when when an investigation is being performed by uh, any of our programs at the agency, uh, but we stick to uh, where our regulatory authority lies, uh, and in which case uh, there there were violations uh, in in FIFA. So uh, that's what we uh, that's what we stuck to, uh, and and it was well documented, and uh, we're we're happy that Nokoi uh, is uh, working with us to close this notice of violation out. We wanted to also get an update on uh, Marble Cave. Sure. Uh, so there, there is a significant progress being made uh, at Marble Cave. Um, again, the contractors over there uh, remain in close communication with the agency. Uh, as of October 11th, uh, the, the contractors reported that they did complete repair work to the uh, to the stairway leading to the cave. Uh, they're also going to be uh, doing more work to reinforce uh, the berms, uh, the silt fences uh, along all the uh, ponding basins. Uh, Revegetation continues to be uh, to be worked on, uh, so th there's there's progress. Um, we did grant an extension uh, to one of our uh, our compliance orders 
Uh, so part of that extension um, requires uh, the contractor to provide the uh, the final engineering plans for, for all the work that's being done um, and, and provide justification on why that work is being done. So uh, it, it's moving along. Um, that That's something that uh, we're, we're definitely happy to report. Uh, Nick, go ahead. <clears throat> No, I was just going to ask, um, what about US EPA? Is there any um, information from them? Yes, yeah, so uh, there, there, was, uh, there was an inspector that came out from US EPA uh, back in August. Uh, the inspector did complete the report. And uh, the last time we spoke about this on the link, uh, we did mention that uh, decisions uh, for enforcement uh, out of region nine uh, they, they don't come very quickly so we're not we, we can't give you uh, or the public a, uh, a a time frame as to when a decision is going to be made uh, if if the the federal government is going to issue uh, their own notice of violation so uh, that 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 is still uh, in process uh, leadership over there will will continue their deliberations and I, I'm sure once the decision is made, uh, we'll, we'll be able to uh, share that with you. And uh, the folks at Region 9 are pretty quick to share those uh, decisions like that. So it, it's really it's really something that is, is in their control right now. Uh, Nick, you know, with this uh, very egregious uh, violation of some pretty basic um, practices at, at a construction site uh, by um, Samsung and Kepco, has it facilitated any... Uh, kind of forward review of other projects that uh i mean have, have your inspectors gone around and just popped in at different uh sites to just check those uh bmps yes uh especially during uh during the rainy season that that's something that uh, our inspectors are on the lookout for uh I, I can also tell you that we've received an uptick in uh community complaints uh you know every time they they happen to notice that you know, a silk fence is down, uh, or it looks like there's a there's this construction site that that appears to have some runoff. Uh, so the community is uh, is definitely uh, more engaged uh, when when it comes to uh, you know watching watching out for their their properties or their adjacent properties. So uh, you know, we we get those calls, uh, and that's something uh, that we've seen a, a, an increase in uh, since uh, since the Marble Cave uh, incident. And I think you know now is the perfect time to probably segue into uh, uh, one of the bills that uh, you know that was signed into law. Uh, this is the one where uh, the uh, the administrative penalty order cap of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars is removed. Uh, so I, 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 it's you could stand a reason that um, now with our calculations for days out of compliance, uh, you know that it, this should serve as a, as a deterrent. Uh, for contractors who aren't as responsible as they should be uh, when when managing their stormwater on their projects, so, so uh, you know we, we do appreciate uh, the, the speaker for introducing that bill. Uh, we appreciate uh, the administration for uh, for supporting us on that effort. Um, so is that it for Samsung Ken Kepco, or do you guys get to go back now that we got a new law and tack on a few extra couple hundred grand? I don't think we're able to do that. Uh, I mean, because the, the the notice was 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 issued prior to the law being changed. But if they find themselves in violation again uh, with this new law, then you could apply that law to uh, to their administrative penalty order. Mm -hmm. There was also another uh, bill that the governor signed. Uh, I think it was Senator Sabina. Paris's bill, Bill 116, regarding illegal dumping. Right, that's the one that we're um, uh, enhancing uh, support for illegal dumping. Uh, I, I think she's also had the fees, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the fines increase. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there's, there's clear language on uh, um, community service uh, if, you, if you get caught apprehended of uh, committing illegal dumping. Uh, there, there's a certain amount of hours uh, that, uh, that that you'd be compelled to perform uh, in in either cleanup or, or recycling outreach. 
Hey, you know, it's been a minute, Nick, since we uh, met up with you at the illegal dump site. Uh, but just uh, want to ask, uh, what's the status of uh, violations and and your your uh, inspectors uh, and these illegal dumps? Is it still the same old problem areas? It is. Um, it, it, we we continue to see the same um, same complaints about the same areas. Uh, I, I do. Uh, if I could just uh, backpedal for a bit with uh, with Marble. Um, uh, so even that area is is prone to illegal dumping. Uh, one of the things that I did want to make mention of is um, in the process of of uh, improving the site access to the cave. Uh, the contractors did pick up the uh, the litter and the and, and and the waste on that part of uh, on that part of the project site. Uh, so uh, hopefully, uh, you know. It stays that way, but but I mean, you talk to anybody that's uh, that's ever participated in a in a, in a cleanup, and it, it's usually uh, it's usually back to the to the same state it's it's been at when you first cleaned up within within a couple of weeks. And so that's that's the unfortunate part about it. Yeah. Uh, it is a tough job. We we do respond to complaints uh, if we're able to tie a, a waste. A waste pile, a waste stream to uh, to a responsible party. Then we go ahead and do that. Um, but uh, it, it, it remains a challenge. The bottom line is, you know, just remember, you, everybody is responsible for their for their solid waste. It, it, there's no excuse for it. You know, the last time we had you on, we were talking uh, about the uh, derelict vessel removal and that executive order that the governor had signed um, a while back. And you did kind of hint like, oh, uh, go check me again uh, the following week. So uh, what's what's the update? We'll be making an announcement on uh, on that shortly. Uh, the the uh, executive order, uh, I believe that was 2020-42, that established the uh, the ADV removal group. Uh, that's a it's a combination of uh, of local uh, of Guam agencies. Um, Guam EPA is. Uh, somewhat the lead on that uh, we do we were able to work with our federal counterparts at region nine uh, we were able to work with uh, with the uh, dod to get some um, uh, training opportunities uh, uh, for for si uh, salvage divers we had a we had a small project um, in 2017 uh, um, I, I i can't remember the name of the of, of the project but it involved uh, the removal of of three uh, abandoned derelict vessels. And so you know, based on that success, um, the agency learned what that process was to get that type of federal support. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a while. Um, uh, it's been a lengthy process. We, we got to complete it. Uh, and through the support of uh, the administration, we're able to get the uh, executive order established uh, to get that going. So um, we're excited uh, uh, for that work and the, uh, an announcement is going to be made uh, on that progress soon. Okay. Um, what about the, uh, there was a public hearing, I think it was last week with Senator Sabina Perez about uh, the open burn, open, open deton pit burning, yeah, detonation open pit, pit yeah, at Anderson uh, Air Force Base. Right, right. Uh, so uh, it was an informational briefing held by, uh, by, by Senator Perez. Uh, the program uh, who would be responsible for Overseeing and regulating that activity uh, appeared, you know, in, in the briefing. Uh, we do understand that, uh, you know, our, our committee chair does have concerns about the agency permitting uh, that type of activity. Um, I, I, I I watched uh, some of the uh, some of the footage from the from the informational briefing, uh, and we all saw the the, the letter that uh, she put out, and and um, um, you know, kind of addressing uh, what her concerns were uh, based on um, based on that type of technology. Uh, I do want to say, first of all, you know, we, we have a great working relationship with uh, with Senator Perez. I mean, you look at the you look at the bills that she's been putting out, you know, we know that, that she's very supportive of, of our agency and, uh, and the mission. Um, it, and if she feels that something needs to be done about uh, about something we regulate. Uh, then she's not gonna not gonna hold back. She she will let us know. 
uh, I, I thought it was a great opportunity for the community to get a better grasp of, uh, of what was being permitted. Uh, our permitting process uh, does go through the public comment period. We, we follow the open government law. Uh, not everybody uh, keeps up to date with that stuff. Uh, so uh, through that briefing, uh, she was able to uh, breathe some life into it and, and uh, get the get the community uh, more educated on on, um, on on the permit. Uh, she was able to, to share her ideas uh, with uh, with our agency, and we were able to uh, inform her of of our decisions on on how the permits written up, uh, what our uh, correspondence is like with Anderson Air Force Base. You know, in terms of uh, the operability of, of the uh, open burn open death site. Uh, so that uh, that decision. Um, for, for any approval still resides with the administrator. Um, I, I could only imagine that additional meetings are probably gonna take place uh, about it, but anything right now would be speculative. Do you anticipate uh, the administrator of uh, Guam EPA uh, responding to the Senator's letter? I'm sure that's forthcoming. Uh, are you able to say because I know that we we did have the senator on and she was saying that uh, this permit is renewed every uh, three years, I believe, right? Um, so does does one take that to mean that uh, the open pit and open detonation has uh, been an ongoing practice on uh, Guam when this permit wasn't in uh, in fact approval and in place? My understanding is uh, that. The open burn is tied directly to open detonation, and I and I think every time uh, there's a unexploded ordnance or or some type of uh, a munition of, of concern, uh, EOD would would probably use that site uh, when it was permitted. Uh, it, it didn't sound like open burning was taking place because the fa the, the facility to to properly pull that off is not completed yet, and so. It, I, I don't think that any open burning was taking place within within the recent future. I mean, I mean, uh, recent times perhaps. Uh, there, there is a plan submittal on um, on the design of their of their facility to to carry out open burning. Uh, that that's not been submitted yet. It, it's part of um, it's part of their permit process. Uh, so right now it just remains that uh, they're, they're going through their steps uh, to to get a permit to operate uh, for open debt. Yeah, that's and 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 again we we did go through uh, the open government law on that. Um, so uh, any decision uh, on on any permit uh, changes or approvals uh, that that resides with the administrator. So when you say you you comply with the open government law and making these announcements. Uh, when and where and how frequently are they announced? Uh, so I, you, you do get, um, so from the time the public comment period uh, 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 begins, uh, an announcement is made. I mean, the, the language in the statute is, you know, newspaper of general circulation, right? You, you've got a couple here. Uh, those things are, are, are published. Uh, and then it, it gives you instructions as to how you can submit your comments. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact date that the uh, you know that the notice went out, uh, but there are instructions on how you can review the, the a copy of the permit, uh, how you could submit your your comments, uh, and it, it does tell you that uh, in certain instances uh, the applicant may have to go through some type of a, a, a hearing with the agency. Uh, what I do understand is uh, the public comment period for that permit has closed, but I, I don't recall the I don't recall the specific dates at this time. Okay. Well, Nick, uh, definitely appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing uh, all this great information uh, with us. And you know, when it comes to the environment, just keep up the fight. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, and you know, we uh, uh, everybody at Guam EPA appreciates uh, the platform that you offer us to engage with the community so thank you for that and you guys be safe well, you we're, too we're here to help nick so god bless you and god bless guam epa thank you brother appreciate it bye